Um, I thought I'd just chill and reflect a bit while I'm on this train because a large part of it is about that. Um, some soul searching, um, spiritual connection, you know, connecting with the country that we live in. I mean, I'm not sure. You know how many of us actually do get to experience our country, you know, on foot, uh, moving such distances, you know, and what it does to us connecting to it and really feeling like we're part of it, you know, but, you know coming from, you know, a township, um, and our movements are very limited in terms of moving to the city and in Akona Sambangi Moto. We tend to be very disconnected, you know, and then when we get back to our our houses, we our, our little cages, we get locked in. And, and we don't see much of of who we are, you know. So this in a way it's more of I guess my own chapter in my liberation struggle, my personal liberation struggle, you know, when we talk about the emancipation of the mind, you know, when we talk about the emancipation of the soul, of the spirit, you know, connecting with your higher power, your inner being, you know, so it's very, very spiritual, it's just, it's just overwhelming um, how much freedom you feel on the road. And at the same time, you have to be careful because there's drivers, there's trucks, there's, there's danger all around you. I mean, we've got trucks driving at 100 kilometers an hour, heavy loaded trucks. Now, that's a lot of velocity. Um, and literally anything that touches you could be fatal. Um, but... At the same time, there's a peace, an inner peace. You know, that you are being guided. You are being guided in safety. You are being guided to knowing yourself even more, you know? That's how I feel about this journey right now. And I think it also happens in divine timing because I'll be doing my first show this year um, October 27th um, um, there's a new gallery in Parkhurst Balemnyama Art Gallery and uh, we'll be doing a, a show called Unconditional Love which is based on some of the work that we've done for the book A Father a Stranger which was edited by Bongani Luvalo and to which I'm also a contributor um, and also the work around cool dads and, um, and this journey, you know. But uh, the discourse will extend to men's issues and men actually choosing to have a voice in things that affect them because unfortunately um, our voices are getting lost within... Um, everybody trying to fight for their own rights and which is good because that's what we need as a country we need everyone to be recognized equally and also to to live in a non-discriminatory way um, but I think our cultures have pushed us to you know, Utindo Taikali, so which means, in a way, shut up and take the pain. And, and unfortunately, it doesn't work that well because it, it leads to mental health issues. Um, it leads to physical health issues. And, and all sorts of other issues that are related or that spawn off that, you know? So, Men need to talk. 
men need to also assert um, their position in society, just like every everybody else, especially black men. And also to say, <laughs> not everybody can be brushed with the same, you know, can be painted with the same brush. Um, we, we are different. No two men are alike. And, um, and some are just trying because, to be honest, we are in a very precarious position where we can't run to the government, we can't run to corporates. Um, from a business sense, there's no support. And you still have to make a living. And no one is taking accountability. But things must go on. So, it's impossible for us to keep quiet under those conditions because those are conditions of oppression. It may not be like apartheid straight out, but it is, it is oppression. We are in an oppressive society. As black men, we are economically disadvantaged. And we have nothing. We have nothing. We absolutely have nothing. We have nothing to give our kids, and our parents gave us nothing. Those that do have something um, are those that were privileged enough, maybe, which their parents were part of government, and um, they were, you know, exiled people that got positions when they got back. But not everyone has that privilege. So there's that level of black privilege that we have to deal with. Um, and unfortunately, we cannot use that yardstick for everyone. Um, some of us in are just down dirty hard workers who never had, um, you know, any spoon, um, not even a bronze spoon, um, or any privileges, just well taught to keep fighting for yourself, you know, so, and also that is a privilege on its own. Because it may not be a financial privilege, but it's an educational privilege to have someone like my grandmother, my mother, who put books around me and and taught me how to read at a very, very young age. And okay, it kind of helps that I was a fast learner, but some people don't have that. And it's even worse for them. So I'm standing here saying, let's all acknowledge our privileges. You know, no matter how small or, or big they are, and start balancing and using those privileges to balance out society. And this is my own way of using my privilege to balance society. I can speak, I can read, I can write, I can paint, I can draw. So these are things that I am using. These are the tools that God has given me, and these are the tools I'm using now to exercise my voice, to be heard. And I'm not just doing it for myself, but I'm doing it for, for many others as well that will come after me that might face the same problems. We need to change this country. We need personal development. We need to understand personal growth. And I hope in some small way this will contribute towards people Acknowledging and also running with the idea. I do have a book on the basics and fundamentals of personal development. It's called Reimagining Myself. And, and also, just to quickly close, um, the idea behind the book is that coaching is expensive. And people pay a thousand rand an hour to, to see a coach. Um, what I've done with the book is basically I've packaged it for 200 Rand so that you could self-coach and give you a start to personal development, which is a continuous activity, something that when you start, you do until you die because you have to keep getting better and better. And I feel that's what we need as citizens of the country, tools to help us get better and better and to be able to stand, for, stand up for ourselves and do something. Anyway... I think that's a mouthful, but when you have 
nothing but road behind you and nothing but road in front of you you get to think a lot so i hope maybe these thoughts will kind of yeah make an impact somewhere somehow in this lifetime or the next later